exotic sounding topic. So let me just take a couple of minutes to demystify what the topic actually means. So if you um, go back, say, even 15 years, uh, not much longer, there was a time when the writers had to write for themselves. Their interaction with the readers was very minimal. They had to write what uh, appealed to them, and except for an occasional fan mail, they did not know what a reader really wanted. But now, uh, in today's day and age, it's a completely different scenario. Every reader can connect, every writer, sorry, can connect with their readers in more than one ways either through their blogs or through social media or uh, uh, you know, through, the, through literary festivals of this sort. So there is a lot of opportunity for writers to actually interact with their readers and to gauge what a reader is actually looking for. So now, given this discrepancy between you know, how it was then and how it is now, this becomes a very relevant uh, theme to talk about. Uh, should a writer or will a writer write for themselves, for their own musings anymore, or does the marketplace, the marketplace can be the readers, the publishers, and in most cases both. So how much do they actually write for the marketplace and how much do they write for themselves is uh, the topic of today's afternoon and we have uh, a perfect panel here. Uh, we have uh, Benjamin who is uh, an award-winning writer amongst us, a literary fiction writer, and we have Preeti Shenoy, the best-selling uh, a, woman's, a woman writer in India today. Her books have uh, sold uh, in thousands and she's in the bestseller charts every day. And now we have Pankaj Dubey, the young filmmaker, the novelist, and he not only writes uh, novels in one language, he actually writes them in two languages simultaneously. So how do they do this? And uh, let me throw the question open to our panelists now. We'll start with uh, Mr. Benjamin. So do you write for yourself, for the marketplace, or a bit of both? Uh, I, th I think it is a very complicated question. <laughs> uh, to whom you are writing for? I think even today itself, uh, we are writing for ourselves. But till, uh, till the publishing date, it is for ours. But after the publishing date, it maybe goes to the market and uh, so many other things are come to, the, to us. What you are telling is, um, uh, I am an award-winning novelist. That means, doesn't mean uh, it is not selling at all. I think the same novel that got the Kerala Sahitya Academy Award published 100 edition in Malayalam itself. And it is translated to many other uh, languages also. That means an award-winning novel can become, a, at the same time, an award-winning novel and it can become an, uh, a, a bestseller also. This is what uh, happening. What, uh, what is, uh, the, we had a bad concept that uh, we cannot go for uh, any, any marketing or self-marketing. It is a, we had a bad concept. But uh, nowadays we are thinking that we have to uh, sell ourselves or uh, otherwise we have to uh, tell others we published some something and uh, that, uh, that, that is the part of uh, our communication, I think. In the earlier stages, we had a lot of critics uh, with us to say others that one book is came out and these are the features of that book. But now critics are end. No more critics live. So we have to do ourselves. Uh, one thing is, I, th I think the award is, uh, awards are the one of the mo uh, most important uh, marketing place. Awards, awards and short lists and uh, long lists are uh, a best place for uh, a market. Uh, people are looking for that and uh, what are the books are coming in the awards and uh, in the long list. So it, it will become a good opportunity. That will give a good opportunity for a new writer. What I am thinking is uh, best marketing place is someone else's mouth. 
Mouth publicity is the best uh, marketing place. Nowhere else. We can pub, uh, give so many advertisements in the, in, the, in the media and some, some other places in the Facebookers or blogs or anywhere you can give the uh, advertisement, but uh, it will not help much. But uh, if a reader tells to someone else, or the, if, if the reader is telling to his friend, is the best way to sell a book. This is what uh, my experience. Let others tell. <laughs> Uh, you really made some uh, very valid points, but in your uh, opinion, still you write for yourself and let the reader decide uh, whether it appeals to him or not. And then spread the word amongst uh, his uh, fellow readers. Yeah, uh, certainly I am writing for myself only. Uh, not for the I will not compromise with the market and uh, anything else. Uh, uh, maybe it is uh, acceptable, maybe it is not acceptable, it is all up to them. But wh what I am writing is it's for me, for my benefits, for my satisfaction only. Always like that only. Wonderful, sir. So, Preeti, what's your take on the topic? I have two things to add here. Firstly, the point that Chwani made that the author today is very connected with all their readers. That I would say has changed like never before. You know, when I was a young girl, when I was growing up, Jeffrey Archer or Enid Blyton, they were just some photograph at the back of the book. And I used to wonder, oh, who are these people? What do they look like? Today when I read a book, whether it's Neil Gaiman or anyone in the world, I can just tweet to them, Deepak Chopra. You know, I can just follow them on Twitter. I get Deepak's reply immediately. And Neil retweets my tweets. So for me, it's a big high. And today, like, there's a reader sitting right here who has traveled all the way from Trivandrum to meet me. And she's able to connect with me, you know, she's able to talk to me. So that is one very important change which is compared, compared to the what earlier. So I so what we need to do as writers is we need to see what are we writing for. I agree that every writer writes for themselves. For example, this book of mine, I think I'll take that one. Are you guys hearing me? Does it keep going? Yeah. I think this is better, right? Yeah. So every book of mine, for example, the book which sold crazily, which most people would have heard of, Life is What You Make It, is about bipolar disorder. Now, if I had thought of the market, you know, thinking, I, I, wouldn't, I didn't write that book thinking, oh, bipolar disorder is going to do well in the market. In fact, nobody wanted to publish it because it was a book about mental health issues. It's a different matter that it went on to break all records. Similarly, this book, the protagonist runs a dog boarding facility, you know. Who would have ever thought that such an unusual choice of career? She's a young girl, an unwed mother. So th when I'm writing it, I'm primarily writing it for myself. But once I have written it, you know, then I don on my marketing hat. And then I'm like, okay, buy my book. Here's a good book. Because unless you do a little bit of marketing, the book is not going to sell itself. And I agree with the point which Benjamin made. You can give thousands of advertisements. You can, you know, shout through the rooftops. You can uh, release commercials on TV. You can have front page ads in Times of India. But the book will not sell itself unless 10 people pick up the book and tell 10 more people and tell 10 more people. That's how a book grows. So both these aspects are very important today. Writing is important. Marketing is important. You know, they kind of coexist. And if it's a bad product, it won't sell. I tend to look at the book as a product. If your product is good, it is going to sell because word of mouth is going to you know, amplify whatever the initial sales was. Uh, yeah, I, in, in effect, both of you are saying the same thing. You know, write for yourself. And then you are saying, you know, go ahead and market it aggressively and Benjamin is saying, you know, let it take its own course. Maybe he, he doesn't do the kind of marketing that the new uh, uh, age writers are doing. Uh, but Preeti, uh, just a little bit of an elaboration on this one. So when you pick the next topic or the tone of writing, you are very connected with your readers. Mm -hmm. So do you just pick a topic that's your muse completely or are you driven by the market? When I pick a topic, it's completely my interests, my muse, my views, everything. For example, V in this book is completely like me, you know, she's so like me. She'll think like me, she'll talk like me, she loves dogs like me, she loves exercise like me. So it's completely my, my muse. In Secret Wishlist, it was, you know, the story came to me 
because a cousin of mine, what happened is, you know, she had written a wish list and she'd forgotten about it. And she just put it in her attic and she forgot about it. And about 12 years later, you know, she was amazed to find out that nine of those wishes had come true. Which made me think that, you know, can it really be possible? Is it possible to make your wishes come true by just writing about it? So the story revolved around that. So at that time, I, I'm not thinking, oh, if I write about wish list, it will sell. If I write about dogs, it will sell. If I write about bipolar, it will sell. I'm not thinking that at all. I'm just writing the story I want to say. Because I'm so excited by that story and I want to tell it to everybody, you know. If I didn't write, I would probably gather all of you and say, come and sit down, I'll tell you a story, listen to me. But I'd probably say that because that's the story I want to say. So when I write, I don't think about the market at all. All right, Pankaj. Over to you, market or the muse, what's your writing about? What if from where I look at it, I don't look at market and the reader and the writer at three different institutions. I think we are living in an era which is quite exciting that everything is intermingled. I believe there has to be a balance between work and network. Because marketing, I believe, is the newly redefined term for what we used to know as awareness. Because be it any concept, be it any idea, be it any propagation, unless there is awareness about it, people, people for whom these are targeted would not come to know about it. If we go back to our history, even we find things in Ashokan inscription, those were nothing but PR tools. When we come to the pre-independence India, before the advent of Gandhi in the freedom movement in India, whatever he was doing in South Africa had come before his advent to our country. And there was a big perception of his image that someone called Gandhi is doing great things against racial discrimination in South Africa. Now he's coming back to take on the Britishers. So in different forms, shapes and masks have been changing, names and terms have been changing, but marketing has always been there and it is very important. As I started, there has to be a balance between work and network. When we call about products, I believe that to produce anything is also quite a creative process. If book is a product, we can't you know, demean books saying now books have become products and we are working in order to promote it. It's very management oriented. When we innovate something and when the surplus production is there, unless you devise tools to sell the product, there is no point. You can't just keep distributing your books to your relatives and friends. So to me, everything is interwoven. We can't look at everything from a distance and saying A is good, B is dark, and C is gray. To me, everything is intermingled. First, it used to be integration, but with time, in the times of new media, this integration has become assimilation, where it, is, it has become quite difficult to define one from the other. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think uh, all three of you are saying that you know you write for yourselves, but let me just rephrase the question a little bit to get more out of the topic. Uh, for example, when Chetan Bhagat came out with this campus uh, a love story, until then people hadn't thought of you know a campus love story can actually be made uh, successful, right? So overnight, writers sprouted everywhere. I don't believe that those writers started writing because it really appealed to them, because they saw Chetan's success and they kind of you know, pointed up, pinpointed, okay, I too have a love story which is set on campus. So let me just go uh, you know, uh, hammer and tongs at it. Why not my story if it is his story? Uh, and love stories. you know. For generations to come, love stories are popular. Most of the time, writers do pick a genre. I don't know whether a genre finds a writer or the writer finds a genre. Uh, so I don't know if it's uh, if a writer is unaffected, as you people are saying, um, by you know what's selling in the market. See, let me let me tell you one thing, Vani. I agree that Chetan's book, post Chetan, you know, Indian publishing can very clearly be divided into pre-Chetan and post-Chetan because the kind of commercial fiction doors which has opened up is like never before. You know, there's money, there's money in commercial fiction. Today, if the publishing industry is running, it's on the wheels of commercial fiction, to put it uh, frankly. So what happens is the love stories that you talk about, the campus love stories, the wannabe, the me too, 
if you look at each author how many copies are their books selling in a whole year you know it will probably be selling 2000 copies or at the most 4000 5000 and if you look at their output are they consistently writing year after year you know they would have written one story which is their story that would have sold some 3000 4000 book and that's it you know so that is not really being a writer to me according to me a writer is someone who wants to write despite what the circumstances are like whether it sells whether it doesn't sell whether anyone reads it whether it does, anyone doesn't read it it is a compulsion with me like today if i don't write i'll explode i'll go mad you know i'm i write because i make sense about the world around me through writing so according to me that's writing you know so if if a person has written one book it's like maybe author who you know i don't think that is really that's really a, okay. yeah sir i think it is a common phenomenon anywhere for for this one because if you see the films if one blockbuster came then another 10 films came come with the same pattern same model this is this is happening in the book in books also uh, meantime we cannot deny such a writers also even chakan phagat or someone uh, popular writing because because of them only Uh, most of other writers are living this is the reality uh, uh, let me tell uh, one thing in in malayalam there are 10 or 15 novelist or uh, writers are best sellers because of them only they are only some lot of maybe hundreds and uh, thousands of other uh, writers are published by by them only because of they, they, their books are selling very well the market is, is boosting up uh, then that will benefit to every others also every other writers also and if you are a winning uh, winner or if you are a winning uh, writer the market will come to you we no need to go for the market and we no need to go go for selling publishing or a publisher will come to us the market will come to us so uh, we have to think that what is our place and where is our place and uh, where we have how we uh, where is our place in our market or how we can uh, write and uh, how we can be a, a, a winner in many ways this is what i am thinking this is uh, we cannot uh, avoid uh, best sellers or uh, popular writers this is what i am th- uh, i have written one book and i'm also a writer <laughs> just one so far so my point is we never said that uh, we just write as says the sanskrit dictum for swanta sukai just for ourselves uh, of course as benjamin said you uh, we can't demean those who are selling more or we can't demean those who are just writing concentrating on our own whims so like i started we can't segregate it like this we have to look at it from a broader perspective because uh, as i started by saying that marketing is the new word for spreading awareness and of course as a writer you are also a social scientist you have to know and you are supposed to know what's happening in your surrounding what people are looking for what are their requirements if i'm very passionate about something happening in nasa and i'm sure that not more than 20 people would take interest in that certainly i'll not write about it i'll not waste because my time is also limited and my readers money is also limited why should i waste on that but if i see a gap i'll of course write things which are being uh, things are in demand are being written are, and are being so if being written properly while you talked about chetan as uh, preeti has rightly put things before and after chetan and uh, nobody can deny that the whole of this publishing industry is running on the success of uh, paperback and the best selling books as well but that at the same time does not demean the serious writing the classical literature because that has also to be there so my point is there has to be a balance between that and one can't say just that i write only for my own pleasure if one has chosen to be honest in life i believe because then you write don't get it published now when you have an interest in getting published that means you are interested in others to read your book so the process of spreading it to readers begins from there the moment you decide i'll get it published so otherwise you write diaries and then you rub it nobody will read it so 
you if you are getting into publication so you are interested you intend that it should be read by people and even now we see some empty chairs over here if it will be houseful will be happier if the media friends from media will publish about us will spread it over social media it will spread to a larger audience will be happier again so we all need more people to know about things happening literature happening things being pushed so i think marketing and awareness has to be kept in mind while you create a product which is not a bad word because production is also a creative process and we cannot demean writing a book just saying it's not a product like a candle it's not a product like a ball or a bulb or a scotch bottle so it's it's a product it's it has been produced out of creative process and book is also a product it's okay let's love all the terms it's not about fighting there's no fight between literature and marketing it's about loving each other and creating out of this process a new born baby which is better and you mean you know your uh, uh, book goat days which kind of circled around a very controversial topic uh, the status of an immigrant worker in saudi arabia that must have really touched your heart for you to uh, you know produce an intense work of the sort so while you were writing did you even think how it was going to be received or uh, what kind of impact would it have on the society or did it do that Yesterday, me and Pankaj was in a session, and we discussed the same thing. I think so. Uh, the main thing, main thing is uh, for what we are writing. This is what the first question. Always we are asking ourselves: for what we are writing. We are writing. I am writing because I have I have something to tell you. I have a story in my hand, so I have to tell you. Uh, I cannot live without. the without telling that story this is the this is the pain i am taking always for writing uh, about this story you know that from so many years maybe 50 or 60 years malayalis are going abroad living in a pathetic condition and uh, but we don't know the malayalis especially indians especially don't know what are the uh, problems they are facing there what life they are uh, what what type of life they are, they are uh, managing there we are seeing especially in the gulf region we are seeing only the glittering face of that uh, region but there are so many other other things are happening there i am living i lived there for more than 20 years so i know the reality as a writer i have a commitment to tell the society this is what happening in that uh, uh, region uh, so that's why i i wrote that story uh, this is my social commitment also and this is my my satisfaction also uh, that is in together and it got banned in uh, saudi arabia from what yes, i hear not only in saudi arabia it is in uh, uae also uae and saudi arabia so but do you banned. think readers are stealthily reading it nonetheless even in the banned countries yeah yeah certainly uh, that is more curious about the books why it is banned so the second edition all, all of us when the second edition of arab uh, translation is came out uh, banning is always a good thing for writers <laughs> and just to elaborate a little bit more on that question uh, it it was extremely well received uh, in kerala because the story centers around an immigrant worker from kerala so who read this book here you know because the workers are probably not your readers so who made this the you know best sell yours is probably a rare example where literary fiction is also a best seller so what made it uh, the best seller that it is uh, i think the 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 subject itself is the best seller because uh, the 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 subject is very unique and rare in in this in the, uh, because i as i told earlier uh, many of us don't know about the the life of abroad what what is going on there so this is maybe a new piece of work to them uh, who who are the readers means in my case it is from school boys to uh, from workers from in, in all the areas 
from from bankers it people or school uh, college teachers or um, from everywhere there, there there were so many readers i found uh, mostly uh, school boys and uh, uh, college students this is what uh, i uh, even workers local workers also read well uh, housewives read well because it is belongs to their family their husband their uh, brothers uh, something in kerala each each, each family having a uh, family have a connection with the gulf so it is always belongs to them the story is belongs to them that's why it is it's become a, a, a best seller i think so <laughs> So I have a question for you, Vani. You know, not many people are aware Vani writes mythology. So, have all of you heard of Amar Chitrakatha? You've all read? How many of you have read Amar Chitrakatha? Yeah. So, the person, so till I met Vani, I used to never think who is the person who is writing all this. Because as far as I'm concerned, it's a comic, it's a great story, I just read it. So, Vani is the person who does hours and hours of meticulous research and she writes the stories behind this and these are the stories we've all grown up reading and Vani and Shiny have written a novel which is mythology so Vani after listening to all of us and friends tell me they never looked at who uh, scripted the Namar Chitra Katha until I started telling them that you know I work for them but coming to the question uh, coming to uh, your remark on the novel uh, me and uh, well-known writer Shiny Anthony have co-authored uh, it is uh, a mix of classic and mythology and we do get asked if we have jumped onto the mythology bandwagon are we writing mythology because that is the most selling thing now after Amish Tripathi uh, though I have been asking this question to all of you, now it's time for me to answer. Actually, no. Uh, the topic kind of found us and uh, we found it interesting and we started writing about it and we really haven't jumped on the mythology bandwagon. Uh, so in that sense, I do agree that uh, the topic chooses you and you don't go after the topic. But marketing-wise, uh, we don't know. We have to take tips from uh, uh, you know, you people because you're all the best-selling writers. So you're agreeing that marketing is important? Yeah. <laughs> uh, see, I agree that marketing is important because I also run a library and to me the only way to know about a book is when someone makes a lot of noise about that book. Absolutely, yes. You know, it may be a great book, but if a publisher hasn't pushed down that book to my inbox repeatedly and in their uh, you know, new arrival list, if I repeatedly keep seeing Preeti Shanoi and uh, Ankit Dubey and uh, my, you know, Mr. Benjamin's name, maybe it won't ring a bell in my head. So as a buyer of the uh, book, uh, I would definitely say marketing is important, but how does it, uh, uh, how is it to a writer? I mean, I will start with maybe Pankaj on this one. Is it an exhausting process? You know, you have just written your book and you want to, uh, you know, just relax now, but then you have to don the marketing hat and spread awareness and uh, productize the book now. One what I feel is, like writing, either you can write or you cannot write. Either you have an inbuilt interest in marketing or you don't have. If you are interested in this, then you know things fall into place on its own. And as far as the significance of it percentage-wise is concerned, after finishing your write-up, most of us think that the work is done, the work of a writer is done, but it's just, to me, it's just the 30% of it. Because unless you scream about it, unless you spread awareness, you use social media, you uh, spread words about it, people are not going to push it, they are not going to get to know about this. Because for a publisher, it's a routine work. Every week they are coming up with a new author or another book of an already established author. So for someone and for someone who is new, it becomes tougher. It's, you know, it's 25, 75, but it's very, very important and it takes a lot of uh, hard work, time, innovation, and you have to uh, be at it all the time on your toes, which is very important. And if it, if it fascinates you, then it becomes easier. No, I, 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 would, I would want to differ. If it fascinates you, it never becomes easier. <laughs> you know, take it from me. Because it also depends on how much are you willing to spend on your marketing and who is going to spend that money. 
So it's a catch-22 situation. For example, for promoting this book, which has incidentally sold more than 60,000 copies, I traveled to five cities. I went to Lucknow, I went to Delhi, I went to Jaipur. Each place I had at least three events. Delhi was exhausting. I was talking at the World Book Fair, then I had a bloggers meet, I had a media meet. And then in the night I had another event where I had to talk about my book. End of the day I just collapsed. It's not easy, you know. And I have a family at home, I leave my family and I travel on my book tours. It never comes easy. Now I say it's a catch-22 situation because a publisher will not spend money on marketing unless the book sells. And unless the book, unless you spend money, it won't sell. So it's a, you know, it's a vicious circle. So where does it start? Where does it end? How much of it? So it's just a, you know, it's just a dynamic which has to come together, which will help. If you are an established name, it will help. Because then people are willing to put money on you. So I do feel marketing is important and it doesn't become easier. In my case, uh, there is no much experience in the marketing side, but for the writing side, I think it is so paining for me. It is very, very, very paining. I took uh, five to six or three to five years for a novel. Once Orhan Bomuk told that writing a novel is digging a well with a needle. This is what happening in the in the uh, in the novel writing. You, what I am thinking is novel writing is the art of patience. We need a lot of patience. We have to travel with a, with, a, with, with a character for seven years, maybe three years, five years. We have to be with them. We have, we, uh, we have to search a lot of things. We have to study. Then only, we, then only the book will become a, a, a good book. Uh, you can write something, but uh, when the satisfaction coming with uh, such a background studies only. Uh, for me, in my case, it is so paining. Still I am writing because I, I can't live without writing, that's why. So how, what's your take on marketing, uh, sir? I mean, do you do the marketing? Are you on the social media? Uh, do you reach out to your... I am, I am so social. Uh, social. <laughs> I am in social media. I, I, I do have a blog. Uh, in this world, we cannot uh, live, live in a cocoon, in the, as in the earlier stages, because so many writers in the earlier stages lived in a, in a very privacy and private places, and uh, even don't know their faces. The, the, the mobile, uh, not even the, the telephones numbers, don't know anybody. It was in classified stages. So uh, uh, now, nowadays, it is the, the, the writers are so open and more public. We have to go public interactions. We have to chat with them, we have to interact with them, the, the uh, readers like to speak with us directly, this is what, so we have to be open, uh, otherwise we, can, uh, we cannot go more. <laughs> you know, another thing I want to add is, you know, some writers come alive only when their book is coming out, so they'll be active on the social media only around that book release time, rest of the time it's like you're unreachable in your ivory towers, and that I feel, in my opinion, it really doesn't work. Because, you know, the reader is not a fool. The reader is going to see through it. So unless there's some sincerity. So it's not that, here's my book, buy it. You know, nobody's going to buy your book just because you're going to scream, here's my book, it's buy it. So it's an all-round process which has to happen throughout. So it's, it has to be, yeah, it has to grow along with your writing and that's a very tough balancing act. Because when you're writing, you want to be in your space, you want to be disconnected. You don't want to sit and answer so many readers' queries, but you have to, you know, so that is... That is one challenge. Actually, this question is right back at uh, Preeti. Uh, those of you who follow Preeti will know that she's extremely uh, active on the social media. And more than that, uh, her blog is one of the most popular blogs in India. Uh, and she's not a passive blogger. She actually uh, pays attention to every reader comment and she actually answers them even if it is in the wee hours of the morning. I have seen her dedication now, you know, being uh, a close friend of hers. So Preeti, my question to you is, uh, what kind of toll does it take on you being this kind of a people's person? So what? On your family, on yourself, generally. So what happens, I think I'm an A-type personality, you know. If I'm sitting here, in my head I'm plotting my next novel. So, you know, when I'm cooking or when I'm jogging, when I'm on the treadmill, that's when I reply to or my readers because treadmill is such a wasted time. But I'm a huge fitness fanatic and I need to walk on the treadmill. 
So I try to maximize that activity. I mean, who is going to walk for 45 minutes? So I have my music on and I have my mobile phone and luckily the mobile has made it very easy. So it just takes me three seconds to reply to a tweet. It just takes me four seconds to reply to a comment on social media. So when I do it at that time when it doesn't intrude into my writing space. So I don't find it all that hard to balance. And I, I refuse to believe people who say, oh, I don't have time to reply to you. Because I do reply. I get thousands of mails. I do reply to every single mail. I may not do it immediately, but maybe at the end of the week, I would allot two hours. And I would reply to each and every person. And it's not that hard. Actually, I can see many people in the audience getting exhausted listening to your reply because <laughs> that kind of energy is unheard of. You know, you can't be on the treadmill reading your uh, reader replies and replying and writing at the but base. But treadmill is so boring. I mean, what are you going to do for 45 minutes? So I have my mobile. It's, it's fun for me, you know. It's fun. Probably that's a tip from you to uh, the rest of the treadmillers here. Um, so now, Ankit, uh, I'm sorry, Pankaj. I'm so sorry. Ankit is my character. I'm Ankit so happy. Is, you know, what exactly that's where it came from because you have the book uh, you know <laughs> head to my face uh, Pankaj see you uh, started your journey as a writer fairly early right if Sorry? I'm, you started your journey as a writer fairly early yeah and uh, you're not just a writer you're a filmmaker yeah so when you are writing a novel, and, and uh, he is no less of an energy fanatic either because he writes his book in English and Hindi simultaneously. So yesterday he was explaining his writing process that exhausted me. He says two chapters in English and five chapters in Hindi. When he comes back to English, he may just finish off English and then go back to Hindi. You know, uh, you figure that out. So uh, the thing is, no, I have to add to that. He said, two chapters English me likha. Char chapter Hindi mein likha, fir wapas English mein, fir Hindi mein, fir ho gaya. That's what he said. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, the, these people are very high energy types, if not the A types. Uh, so, Ankit, my question is, um, coming... Okay. So, 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 <laughs> please, profuse apologies, I'm not going to take okay. the name at all. And Pankaj, um, so how much does it affect you when you're writing your novel? Do you constantly keep in your mind... Uh, that it may have to be made into a movie because his book, uh, his own book, he's also making a movie out of it. So does that affect your writing? You know, do you constantly think, you know, this dialogue may not work in the movie or this description is impossible when I make a movie out of it? You know, how, how do you uh, figure that out? For those who are interested, my name is Pankaj Dubey. I'm Pankaj Dubey. Whether I'm a writer or I was a journalist or I'm also a filmmaker, these are different sects of my overall bigger identity and that is Pankaj Dubey. He writes sometimes, then he becomes a writer. Sometimes he makes a film, he becomes a filmmaker. He used to make his bread and butter doing some journalistic work before, then he was a journalist. So these are different hats one dons. But he actually is one guy who is Pankaj Dubey. Pankaj Dubey. Yes. PD. So, now, coming back to your question, it's not that I wanted to contribute something to the field of literature. It's not that I saw some space that this kind of writing is not there and I am the only God's gift on this planet to write about that. It's not like that. When I had to choose between modesty and honesty, I opted for honesty. So please don't expect any modesty from me. I actually honestly wanted to make film, just film, and to see what is the credibility of my story, what kind of reception it can have as a film. I thought my script to come as a novel first because it takes less to write a novel than to make a film because a lot of much more things, a lot of much more money, time and people are involved in making a film which is a big, big, big project. You can write a novel a year but you can't say I can make a film every year. It's not possible. So primarily the vision was to make a film and to see whether this story has got some water to hold. I tried to bring it out as a novel which has worked so well that the publisher gave me two more books contract and I'm writing again, simultaneously working on the film. So it was always right from day one, a cinema in my mind. And once you go through my book, 
out of which i'll be reading a chapter as well it's very screenplayish in nature i've tried to go beyond the blocks i've not written it as a book 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 or a novel 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 it's like a screenplay of a cinema so you can visualize a lot of things it has dialogues it talks to you it's very interactive so cinema was always there that's what i dream i sleep and i make love to and writing a novel is just a device to reach there madam pankaj dubey uh, so uh, uh, let's uh, you know ask our writers uh, to read short excerpts from their books to give us a glimpse into uh, you know what kind of writing they do uh, we are going to start with pankaj dubey's what a loser thank you and pankaj dubey over to you yeah so my book is called the novel is called what a loser we have to call it a book so i call it a book but i understand that this is much more than a novel it's a i call it a conspiracy document it's meant for those non readers like me to convert them into readers it's a conspiracy document for converting non readers into readers so i'll read the first chapter uh, any any what, whatever gives uh, the audience here a glimpse into the book you know yes, whatever yes. makes them right away go to the stalls and buy your books does does everyone understand english over here most of us otherwise i'll have to give an extra i beg your attention friends at the last bench last row your mom is getting screwed in one room sister in another there is a third room from where you can hear moans that's your wife getting screwed by a guy you can save just one of them who would you save your time starts now This was the first question thrown at Pax as he entered the first floor of the famous flat number 440 of Mukherjee Nagar in Delhi. It may be called ragging but for Pax this was a rape rather gang rape. Pax appeared like a scared white sheep whose fur and skin was soon going to be shown apart by knitting sweaters by this half boys half men breed. his flesh was ready to be boiled as stew every fresher goes through the sheep phase after joining the north campus of delhi university and pax was no exception he was very nervous two drops of sweat trickled down his nose onto his upper lips just like polio drops subodh singh said mockingly guys look at this mandakini he's sweating like she did in ram teri ganga mali to this everyone guffawed loudly subodh singh behaved as if he was holding a darbar in his first floor 440 400 square feet flat in a refugee colony one of his foot soldiers mayank asked is it just your face or even the even your trousers are wet pax felt as if he was choking and someone was strangling him he wanted to cry loudly but to keep a facade of sportsman spirit he gave a faint lopsided smile he had never imagined he would have to go through such a brutal verbal ragging soon a tear drop rolled down his cheek subodh singh saw this and threw a gamcha at him this red striped thin cloth was not just used as a towel by cow belt boys but was also a symbol of bihari's machismo gamcha worked for a bihari in the same way was as underwear over pants worked for superman dear mina kumari wipe your tears and answer my question he said referring to the old time tragedy queen of the movies mayan shifted a bit caught hold of a bottle of water next to him and offered to pax have some water it will work like tonic to wash away your hesitation Pax gratefully gulped it down and felt slightly better. His lips were parched, and by now he realized he wouldn't escape the torture till he answered his tormentors. Feeling like a soldier at the LOC, Pax took a deep breath and answered with all the guts he could gather in a high-pitched voice, "I'll save my wife, sir." 
the answer unexpected as it was led to a pin drop silence. Even Mayank was stunned to hear this answer. He started looking at his leader Subodh Singh's face to get his reaction. Subodh Singh asked him pointedly, and what about the mother who brought you in this beautiful world and your sister who tied Rakhi to you all her life and you made promises of her safety? Who will save them? Although Pax didn't have the energy to respond further to Subodh Singh's stupid questions, he was still a victim. He didn't want to look cocky or be taken for a fool. So taking a deep breath and gathering all his wits, he replied, Sir, it's quite possible that the sister in the first room might be sleeping with her husband and similarly mother could be sleeping with father. But when it comes to the wife, should not I be the one to protect her, sir? And not anyone else? The moment these words were put, Pax began to pray, Oh God, please save me. My answer should not anger the esteemed members of this zoo. Subodh Singh's serious face relaxed a bit and one could see a grin creeping in. He gave a solid thump of approval on Pax's back. Mayank, the loyal foot soldier, immediately got up to switch on the FM radio at full blast. Pax knew by now that he has been accepted by the gang and he could stay. A battle had been won. Welcome to 440 Mukherjee Nagar, Delhi, said Subodh Singh. He looked and behaved like the president of the nation, welcoming Pax to the most prestigious address of Delhi. Pax let out a relieved sigh and grinned. His Delhi life had officially begun. Thank you. So this was the first chapter of this conspiracy document. I am pretty sure uh, many in the audience will be thinking what happens to Pax later. So, so am I. Uh, now we'll move on to uh, uh, Mr. Benjamin for his reading. With the kind permission of you all three, let me read from Malayalam Absolutely because sure. uh, God is already know by them because it Very may good. be a repetition. So uh, let, let me read from my new books. Definitely. <coughs> the Mullapu Naramulla Pagalagal and Varayana novel Uricharia Pagamana, Vaikan Agrikin, the Anna Iperta and a Tum Pudia novel, Alarabin Novel Factory, Mullapu Naramulla Pagal and Varayana, Randu novel. ஒருக்கலக்சின்னால் அதுகுண்டுதன்னேன் நான் பெலி கொடுத்திரிக்கின்னுவன்னானு சங்கடத்தை மரிகடக்கன் அவரு தேஷ்யம் எனக்கும்டாயி வெண்டுக்குள்டையும் சர்சக்காரடையும் சுகுருத்துகள்டையும் மதிதுகளையும் வகவக்கியாது நான் தாயடம் ஒரியிலேக்கு ரோஷத்தோட கைரிச்சில்லையும் அதின்ட பேரில் அதேவுமாய் அசந்தைக்கு வல்லாதே கலகைக்கியும் சேது அந்திராத்திரி த Vocês சொந்தம் பர்தாவின்டே, சொந்தம் பிதாவின்டே முகம் அவசானமாய் உன்ன காணான் போலும் கடியாதப் போயவர் 
അതിനും കാരണക്കാരൻ മറ്റാരുമല്ല തായയാണ് ആചാരങ്ങളും വിശ്വാസങ്ങളും പറഞ്ഞ് ബാബയെ കാണുന്നതിന് അവർക്കുള്ള അവസരം നിഷേധിച്ചു മായ ഒരു വിസിറ്റിംഗ് വിസ വിസയിലെങ്കിലും ഇങ്ങോട്ട് കൊണ്ടുവരണമെന്ന് ഈ രാജ്യമൊക്കെ നട കൊണ്ടു നടന്ന് കാണിക്കണമെന്നും ബാബയ്ക്ക് വലിയ ആഗ്രഹമായിരുന്നു പക്ഷേ തുച്ഛമായ ശമ്പളത്തിന് അത് സാധ്യമായിരുന്നില്ല നീ വന്നു ജോലിയും കിട്ടി ഇനിയെങ്കിലും നമുക്ക് നിൻ്റെ മായയെ ഇങ്ങോട്ടൊന്ന് കൊണ്ടുവരണം നീ വിളിച്ചാൽ അവൾ വരും ഫൈസലബാദ് അല്ല ലോകമെന്ന് അവളെ നമുക്കൊന്ന് കാണിച്ചു കൊടുക്കണം എന്ന് ബാബ ഒരു ദിവസം എന്നോട് പറയുകൂടി ചെയ്തിട്ടുള്ള ചെയ്തതാണ് അതും സാധിച്ചില്ല ചിലരുടെ സ്വപ്നങ്ങൾ അങ്ങനെയാണ് അത് വെറുതെ കാണാൻ വേണ്ടി മാത്രമുള്ളതാണ് അല്ലാതെ അബദ്ധവശാൽ പോലും സഫലമാകാനുള്ളതല്ല ബാബ എപ്പോഴും ഉദ്ധരിക്കാറുണ്ടായിരുന്ന മഹാവരയിലെ രണ്ട് വരികളാണ് ആ രാത്രി അത്രയും എൻ്റെ മനസ്സിൽ ആവർത്തിച്ചു വന്നത് മോത്തു പെർ ഹഗെ ലേക്കിൻ കഫൻ പെർ ഷഖെ മോത്തു പെർ ഹഗെ ലേക്കിൻ ഷഖൻ പെർ ലിവിൻ കഫൻ പർ ഷഖെ മരണം ഉറപ്പാണ് പക്ഷേ ശവക്കച്ചയെക്കുറിച്ച് ആർക്കും ഒരു നിശ്ചയവുമില്ല താങ്ക് യു I'll just read a bit from the first chapter which I think I see a lot of young people in the audience so I think you guys will be able to relate to this one There are two ways to deal with bad grades if they are yours you study but if they are your child's and if you are anything like me you yell at them or you try to understand them even when you think you know all the answers because that's what all the parenting guides tell you to do The latter usually helps and throws up win-win solutions the former results in them turning into a wall trial and error has taught me that the latter though a harder route is always a better option do you want to explain this i ask my son trying not to grit my teeth and trying harder to keep my voice sweet and calm like the parenting manuals advice don't yell whatever you do don't yell stay calm no he says as he blows a lock of hair away from his forehead with a practiced upward puff of nonchalance both hands stuck in the pocket of his jeans indicating the end of any further discussion from his side he's almost as tall as me and he now looks me in the eye with a classic i can defy you and there's nothing you can do about it pose that most teens adopt once they reach a certain height of course i don't let go so easily i'm not his mother for nothing that is not an acceptable answer and you know it i try to sound calm but my voice betrays me so What do you mean so? How many times have I told you? Be reasonable. You walked out on your parents because you wanted to have me and you refused to take their money. He says calmly. My anger at his reply spikes to an all-time high. Most of the times I'm unre- I'm reasonable and unruffled. I discuss things with him and treat him like an adult. but now i'm so mad i could punch him but that is not going to help the rage the sheer helplessness at his cool demeanor plus the facts that he has so calmly and clearly stated act as catalysts and i explode giving vent to the fury that has been swelling inside me and that i have been trying to contain i fling his report card across the bedroom and his answer papers neatly stacked inside it go flying and scatter all across the room you You fool I struggled so much to raise you well and now this I'm unable to complete the sentence He calmly picks up the report card and stacks all the answer sheets neatly inside then he hands me a bottle of water I breathe in and out deeply and glug down some He's 15 going on 25 Ma I have told you so many times his voice is gentle as though he's the parent trying to explain something patiently to an errant child What With my outburst our roles are reversed now I feel like an unreasonable teen throwing a tantrum instead of the other way around These are just mock exams they do it on purpose give everyone bad grades they are strict with correction they want to shake you up so that you work harder for the boards he says He has now done a complete turn around and changed from the sullen defiant teen to the understanding son that he usually is So what Aryan can't you study harder make your answers perfect and get marks even in mocks i demand i have never compromised on academics and the one thing that i insist on is good grades even though i am a relaxed and indulgent parents in most other things it's impossible ma why is it impossible has everyone in your class got only c and d isn't there anyone who has got an a or an a star 
Yes, a couple of them did. Who? Nitin and Monica. Then? It isn't impossible, right? It's not like they're smarter than you. It's probably because they work three times the amount that you do. So I think this will be a dialogue, you know, replayed in most houses when it comes to marks. I think every parent here and every child here has connected with the paragraph <laughs> completely. And, uh, you know, we will all agree that uh, these are three distinct voices, very interesting voices. And uh, now I'm sure a lot of you have a lot of questions for our panelists. Uh, we'll throw open it to uh, a Q&A. Just one request, please ask... Uh, questions. Uh, we would love your comments, but if you can ask questions, our panelists will be able to address, uh, you know, more precisely. Uh, so now, uh, any questions from the audience? Specific short questions, please. Hi. Um, I recently published my book. Um, it's a collection of poetry. And after I published my book, I got a few calls from uh, friends of friends of friends, uh, knowing that they published, I, I published a book. And out of six calls that I got, three of them, three of them asked me different questions based on vaguely the same topic. Um, they told me, hey, listen, uh, I got some dirt on Gandhi. Um, you know, I'm writing something like a... Please, uh, let's get to the question quickly because there may All be right. other questions as uh, well. So Sorry to they, be... they have something um, like uh, Amish's work. So um, they wanted that to get published in that genre and they have some very negative thoughts which they want to put in a book so that they get more publicity. Do you think it's a positive tre trend in literature and it's going to help literature in any way? It's, is it a positive trend in the literature? What is a positive trend? Them th that, these, uh, that they want to put so much negativity in and sell the negativity. It's definitely not a positive trend. It's horrible. No, what if it gets sell, uh, sold very, very abundantly? Is that a... No, why trend? would it? Why would it? Just because somebody calls you up and criticizes your book, I don't think that's going to affect the book sales. Because when someone criticizes your book, obviously it's coming from their personal opinion. Like I might read his book or he might read my book. I may not like certain things in his book. If I'm his friend, I would tell him it wouldn't come from a place of negativity. I would probably phrase it that, look, if you had written it this way, it would be better. And I would expect the same if Vani told me, hey, Preeti, if you write it this way. I mean, if it's a true friend, the person will try to build you up, not pull you down. And uh, maybe our other panelists can answer this question as well. Sir, how do you uh, react to, uh, if not a negative comment from a friend, to your negative uh, review? Don't listen much for uh, reviews and uh, friends' comments because every person have their own concept and their own views about uh, you must confident on your work. Um, so you don't mind them. That is the best way to go ahead. Because uh, negative comments will come always. So many, uh, as I told earlier, my book is published 100 times in the in, in, in last eight years. That is, the 100th edition came out. And so many negative comments are coming every day. But people are keep on reading some other way. So uh, don't mind much. This is my experience. Um, um, I, I don't think that was exactly my question. Um, it was um, the people who called me knew that I published a book and they wanted to publish too, their works. And most of their works were negativity on famous personalities or maybe religions. So uh, do you think such negativity sells abundantly? No, if such negativity sold abundantly, you will have a whole lot of bestsellers. All you have to do to see what sells is look at the bestseller list. And if you look at the bestseller list, what is it? The books that are selling are books like, which are giving people hope. Even if you take the non-fiction list, you know, books like Magic, you know, which are p giving people hope, books like Secret. I don't think negativity sells. Uh, just to complete my question, uh, Pankaj, how do you react to uh, negative reviews? I know that was not her question, but, uh, you know, it's uh, a question that a writer gets frequently asked. What about a negative review? I simply say, take it light, just relax, chill. If you didn't like it, I'll try to improve myself next time. Let's talk about better things. I don't take it seriously. Because my, my focus is to write my next one and to make my films. Why should I give mind share to such stupid questions? And everybody has a freedom to have a point of view. 
I accept that. Let there be love, let there be hatred. Everything coexists. Uh, any more questions from the audience? Sir, Vipanayile Kaviya Devata Nanalomala Vishayam. Pudhiya Katha Kavida Novel. Edithagarka Vendi. Sarne Parola, Senior Diola, Edithagar Dai. Prasadagarodula, Vodeshanda. Any key for Southern Road of the Shonula, Editagar Parayan or other Snehurum Parayan or other Namulde Iperte Kalat Namulde to Milia Agraham. What is our ambition is to publish a book that is not good at all. The publisher will come to you whenever it is needed. Ipanda Joja Namalandi, or you moon the Kavi Edian Session, modern Pustam Prostirich. Nampol buku mak ayah nampol itu lagi agaknya itu lagi. Ini ni ayah nampol publisher modal edukan dah. Nampol ini tu banyak ramai kasih mereka cerita buku mak pasti eri kena beli iya satu satu perubahan dah. Ibu dek ipol unda itu unda dah. Nampol dek satu aktiar ti edukar dek aktiar ti modal edukan dah. Nampol dah. Nengal satu real writer ayah nengil nengal edukah nengal variegal edukah nengal perasaan ayah masih kalau ke edukah nengal dek peru anda ayah samuham teri ceri mau eri kata tulis cerita publisher nengal dek ada teku beri. Publisher will come to you whenever it is needed. Adu ere, ninggal nisabdena irikya, ninggal endengkelu erdaan seramikya, nolada ni nikki paraya nolada. Alah de, publisher de, endaan ni teratur lola gimmicks gal ke, nammal dinnu goduk kerida, endaan ni nikki paraya nolada. Karena nama ayam waik illa nolada sathya, ninggal sondamai eri postam prosti eri cipt, ninggal sandoshito lodi itu kondo adan nu goduk tal sathya, pernah itu ayam waik illa nolari adhar te manam. Ninggal waik illa nolari, ninggal de adutta bandukal waik cuan de paraya nolari, itu nu waik illa nolila. Waik nak kaya ni dhar te tulun da bandu da, nun da ibaran da, nama beri anda anda, nenggal tu creativity di licchar, ni jawa nak cari beri umno lah. Anala buku tu, pasti eri kaya, nolol nenggal tu rajin dia, kuantum nak kiri tu, nana ini kita bini itu mai pariwara lah. Yeah, I just. Since I'm the only one here who understands Malayalam, I'll quickly translate it for the rest of the audience. So basically, what Benjamin said is that you know if. If you just because you've written two, three poems and you know don't go in for self-publishing because it's likely that if you go in for self-publishing, it's only you and your you know a limited circle of relatives might read it and even then the relatives might be lying that they read it, you know. So wait till the publisher comes to you and what he said is the publisher is investing a substantial amount of money in your work, so it, there has to be something in it for him. So be true to yourself and be patient even if you are not publishing. Did I sum it up right? Okay. Uh, this, uh, I just wanted to ask Pankaj, uh, he uh, said that uh, I don't take these remarks uh, you know, very seriously, but uh, I'm mentioning about the critics, actually. you know, the, some of the readers, they may not be the uh, you know, established critics, but they may be having the good capacity to analyze the thing. So it will help the uh, writer to yeah. grow, actually, uh, and, you know. I, I'll so, come to Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just want yes, to react yes, yes. to that. My answer was to the comment, if someone is just talking negative, negative, negative thing. But I strongly believe in democratic values and I understand the role of opposition in a democracy and smooth functioning of the state. So, if there is a positive criticism, I of course look at it from different perspectives and I try to find out a room whether if I work in this direction, whether it's going to give some qualitative improvement to my next work. That's always there. Keeping that broad picture in mind, what I talked about in the, my uh, last answer was to not take such criticisms very seriously and get impacted and, you know, let your productivity not be influenced by that. That's my point is. So we have to chef the husk from the grain. So we have to leave the husk aside and enjoy the grain. Let noble thoughts come to us from every side. Anubhadra kratvo yantu vishvataha, says the Rig Veda. Yeah. It sure does. More questions from the audience? Best seller, Ennu Paranya, Uru Mayanadannam, Aitvada Kandu. Usna galah tu orang je bete di negara ini, jauh apa bete di negara ini. Puri limited season ni le, korang pusingan gal, kudel, kopi gal bete di negara ini. 
സിനിമയിലെ കൊമേഴ്സിക്കലോ ആർട്ട് ഫിലോ എന്ന് പറയുന്ന പോലെ ഈ കൂടുതൽ കോപ്പികൾ വിറ്റഴിയുന്നത് കൊണ്ട് മാത്രം ഒരു പരമപ്രധാന ഘടകമായിട്ട് ആ പുസ്തകം ആ ഗ്രന്ഥം ഉദാത്തമാകുന്നില്ല ഈ ഒരു സീസൺ കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ഈ ബെസ്റ്റ് സെല്ലർ ഒരു ചൂടൊപ്പം പോലെയും ഉഷ്ണകാലത്ത് ഓറഞ്ച് വിറ്റഴിയുന്ന പോലും വിറ്റഴിയുന്നില്ല പിന്നെ നമുക്കൊരു ആത്മസംതൃപ്തി സെൽഫ് സാറ്റിസ്ഫാക്ഷൻ ഒരു ആത്മസംതൃപ്തി കിട്ടാനും നോ പ്രോഫിറ്റ് നോ ലോസ് പിന്നെന്തുണ്ടെന്ന് ചോദിച്ചാൽ സർവീസ് ഉള്ളി ലിറ്ററി സർവീസ് അത് ഒരു സോഷ്യൽ സർവീസ് അല്ലെ ഒരു കമ്മ്യൂണിറ്റി സർവീസാണ് അപ്പോൾ ആ നിലയിൽ ഗ്രന്ഥങ്ങൾ കൂടുതൽ കോപ്പികൾ വിറ്റഴിഞ്ഞതുകൊണ്ട് മാത്രം അത് നല്ല ഒരു ഉദാത്തമായ നില എത്തുന്നു എന്നുള്ളതിന് ഒരു ഘടകമല്ല ത്രിമൂർത്തികളാണ് പുസ്തകത്തിൻ്റെ അത് പ്രധാനമായിട്ടുള്ളത് ഗ്രന്ഥകർത്താവ് പബ്ലിഷറ് വായനക്കാരനെ അല്ല ദയവേത് ക്വസ്റ്റിനിലേക്ക് വരും അതുകൊണ്ട് അപ്പൊ അനുവാചകന് നിങ്ങളുടെ അഭിപ്രായം പറയണ്ട ചോദ്യം എന്താണ് അപ്പൊ അനുവാചകനും ഇതിലൊരു ഒരു അഭിപ്രായം ഉണ്ട് പ്രധാന ഘടകമാണ് ഇതെല്ലാം സംബന്ധിച്ച് പുസ്തക പുസ്തക പ്രസാധകനും ഗ്രന്ഥകർത്താവും വായനക്കാരനും ഈ ത്രിമൂർത്തികൾ ചേരുന്ന മേഖലയാണ് ഗ്രന്ഥ പ്രകാശന മേഖല അപ്പൊ ആ നിലയിൽ വായനക്കാരനെ കൂടെ മനസ്സിൽ കണ്ടുകൊണ്ട് വേണം ഏത് ഗ്രന്ഥകർത്താവും പുസ്തക രചന നടത്തുവാൻ അങ്ങയുടെ ഒരു പ്രഭാഷണത്തിൽ ഞാൻ മനസ്സിലാക്കി നോവൽ രചന സൂചി കൊണ്ട് കിണർ കുത്തുന്നത് പോലാണെന്നും മനസ്സിലാകുകയുണ്ടായി പക്ഷെ അങ്ങനെ കാര്യങ്ങൾ നന്നായി അതിനുള്ള മറുപടി കിട്ടണം അഭ്യർത്ഥിക്കുന്നത് വിനയപൂർവ്വം സ്നേഹപൂർവ്വം അദ്ദേഹം പ്രത്യേകിച്ച് he made some such statement only <laughs> uh, see since i did not understand the language i didn't know whether it was the uh, question or the comment so the uh, questions know. please you know specific questions to the author so that the authors can uh, uh, you know the session will be more productive you know they are i understood about 10% of what he said <laughs> i think uh, i could feel the spirit yeah i think there is a distinction no, no, i agree i agree that best sellers don't have to be a flavor of the season but the fact is year after year if the book is selling like benjamin's books there's no way it is it can be called flavor of the season because it's like hundreds and thousands you know and same for my books there's no way it is flavor of the season and you know it's not a chewed up or anything yeah it's a book which has created which has touched millions of hearts I'm no, little flavor of this season it, since it's about marketplace books in marketplace uh, I think you need to make a distinction between uh, what is publicity and what is marketing uh, I mean especially in the context of certain uh, books uh, say for instance if uh, the book is about the water issue and it is being printed by or published by a company which is supported by coca cola would you still uh, favor the publication uh, sort of supporting the book and say for uh, another uh, giving another example if it is about the mining industry and uh, being supported by a company uh, financed by vedanta would you still go ahead so i think there is a moral question there is there is an ethical question which uh, the writer has to take ultimately when it comes to marketing but publicity of course he is at liberty and uh, i think uh, i mean i deserve an answer to that See let me put it very simply if the publisher is not going to make money out of your book the publisher will not want to publish your book at the end of it it's a business deal for him it's a business deal for you so as long as it serves both purpose if my message in my book is getting across to thousands of people you know it doesn't matter to me whether rupa publishes it or westland publishes it or srishti publishes it i might choose one over the other for reasons which are commercial because i'm purely commercial author and i don't think if anyone is saying that you know i'm writing a book keeping in mind you know it's for social service it is for message they would probably be writing ngo pamphlets they won't be novelists no 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 I'm, subsequently I'm, i would like to add something yeah. to it that like the electorates of our country even readers are not fools you can't just write a crap publicize it big and they'll start buying your book and reading it it's not happening like we have the right to write they have the right not to read also the right not to buy also so they are not just ships and goats that you'll just bombard them with anything and they'll start reading and grazing it now just answering your question uh, once uh, there were 18 volumes of uh, puranas published by kodes i was kodes is uh, a, a, a manufacturer of uh, brewery you know they are the beer company and uh, to pick up those volumes of puranas i actually had to go to their brewery 
so i thought it was you know such an unusual setup but it did not matter to me i thought whatever they are doing they are also uh, doing this social survey sort of a thing they were selling the books but i so in that sense if coca cola does it on uh, you know water purification plants still people will read it uh, if the content is good okay. i was i was not talking about books that are like uh, i mean sloganeering and stuff like that i was talking about books books with artistic content but set in a particular background and written with a purpose where probably the purpose is defeated it somebody who you are probably thinking of as the enemy of the people involved in the publication of the book then there comes a moral question so that is what i was referring to secondly one one question to mr pangaj you made a mention of your no, uh, novel your work as uh, i mean sort of having intended to convert uh, so non readers yeah, into readers convert, no to be converted into a film ultimately oh yes yes and you said there is a story line which you have uh, sort of thought of and yeah, uh, yeah. i mean put down and stuff like that now my question is is it mandatory that a film has a story in place is it just about a story i feel so in my opinion i feel so any film uh, this backbone of a film is the story whatever you do if you don't have a story it doesn't work at least to me it doesn't work so story has to be there and as far as your first part of the question was concerned i strongly feel that's what i just mentioned it to preeti tomorrow you mentioned about coke coke can also come up with a pious idea of starting a good publication house and they can it's yet another business so i think the conflict arises for example dow you know they came out with an ad where they said you know the skin color doesn't matter they used natural women and all that and the same company had another ad which promoted their beauty products for smoother skin and all of that so the conflict comes in your communication so they there there it is double sided but if a company is coming out with something in the largest interest of the people spending money I, i i think it's fine because you know the resources which they using yeah. to reach out to a greater audience the corporate social responsibility to me it doesn't matter to me it doesn't matter like she the, the point she made about kode is coming out with the uh, mythology edition uh, more questions i think we only have the last 3 uh, minutes or so if we can squeeze in as many questions as we can hello i'll ask uh, one question to mr besnia i mean particularly because uh, his rdg with them has almost covered 100 edition but uh, other books are not uh, best sellers like that uh, what is your opinion or how will you evaluate it i don't think so because the madhyavil marnangal the yellow lights of uh, death it is going to be 50000 copies uh, in uh, last 4 uh, years uh, this uh, this one uh, allaribinol factory in, in one year it is almost 20000 copies already sold Uh, so many others bookers book also uh, selling well because we cannot be a best seller for uh, every each and every book um, we must, um, must not expect that much of level maybe some book may be sell more someone may be i am i am not i am not at all worry about that one because uh, we do have some certain uh, real readers they will read almost every book but uh, some books they will um, many of us read maybe one or two books only in, in their life they will choose maybe god days or adji with them um, so, uh, we, we cannot expect uh, our all books be, will become a, a best seller I, i am also not expecting thank you sir i think we can take one last question uh... unfortunately i am the last questioner once again there is somebody else thank you um everyone of you had said that um the the market has in influenced the topic that you have selected to write but my question is has market influenced the language or the style that you use to write the metaphors or similes that you use as a market have you ever thought that okay this kind of language or this style is what's in vogue now so i mean has market in any way influenced that in my case no because whatever i am writing i am giving to the publisher if they wish they will publish that's all 
market is not uh, influence, influencing me at all. Publishing house is not influencing me at all. But there are some other uh, writers are uh, doing something because the publishing house, actually not in Malayalam, in some English, uh, I know that uh, some writers are writing. Uh, the publishing house is giving the ideas uh, or subject, and they are writing on, on, on that subject. This is what ha uh, happening in our, our weeklies, not in uh, uh, CDS weeklies. No, in some other weeklies, they are also doing such a thing. That is, a, we are not considering as a, as a good uh, creative work, something else. But uh, in my case, not at all. Nobody is asking me to write something. It is, uh, it is all by benefit or that's all. <laughs> to, to me, markets is like that beautiful girl whom I want to get affair to and eventually married. So I'm listening to what she is asking me to change towards it. And I'm fine I'm, I'm, because market is, you know, inspiring in order to cater to more audiences. And that's precisely what I also want. So if the girl I'm in love with is asking me to change a bit, change my ways a bit. I'm happy about it because I want to marry her and she has also shown some interest. So, Let me add one word. Even I, I will not allow to edit a single word from my, 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 my work. Huh. Uh, even even I, I, I will not allow. If they ask me sometimes, I, 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 I usually tell, tell them, no, 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 not at all. Don't remove even a single line from my, my, my work. This is what my... No, I tend to agree with Benjamin on this because I have been approached by publishers, you know, today because I'm a recognized name, so publishers have approached me to commission a story. So they've given me a story, they've offered me a huge lot of money, I have refused because that is not the story I want to tell, you know. If, so, and then I hear of publishers telling authors, put some sex scenes in it, it'll sell, you know. That fortunately for me, I am able to stand my ground. Fortunately for me, I think we are lucky that I am able, to, I will write only what I want to write. I am not influenced. For example, dog boarding. You know, no, no one is going to think, boarding dogs, what is that? But that is what I wanted to write. So I am not influenced by what the publisher tells me. But we have been fortunate, maybe Benjamin and I have been fortunate because we have tasted success. Once you have tasted success, you, like, if you are desperate to get published, then you'll probably, you know, you might cater to something which the public, because you want to get published. But fortunately, once if you, you know, if you've had some success, you've had some, you are able to, you know, stop that. You're able to deny that. And the same, like Benjamin said, it's the same for my poetry. Somebody wanted to publish my poetry. They wanted to edit my poems. I said, no way. I said, prose you can, even if you tell me, grammatically this might sound better, I might consider it. But poem, there is no way I'm letting you edit it. I did not let them publish it. So I'm very clear on that. I feel strongly about it. While I answered, I would like to categorize the influence on linguistic and thematic two different categories. When I said I love this girl, that, that's for linguistic and more acceptable lingos. Not for the thematic to which we are on the same page. But linguistic, I like writing things which more people can understand easily. If I'm getting serious on some account, and if my publisher has suggested or my editor has suggested, you can make it slightly lighter in order for many more people to be understood, I can move forward for a good kiss and a smooch as well. Well, thank so you, basically, audience. Basically, Benjamin and I will sleep only with whom we want to sleep. He's okay. You know, he'll make adjustments. That's what he's trying to summarize on a lighter note, of course. Well, thank you, uh, everybody. And thank you, panelists, Benjamin, Preeti, Pankaj. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed uh, your afternoon. And if you have more questions, you have been a wonderful audience. And if you have more questions, you can always interact with the authors uh, outside of the session. And thank you, and have a nice day. And thank you, our moderator, who has been so nice. Thank you so much. Thank you.